Hey guys, welcome back to the channel and today we'll be reviewing the Corsair HS60 haptic headset and this headset literally lets you feel the bass that's going on in games, in music, and movies. We'll see if that's really distracting or if it's a bonus coming up. Welcome back to the channel. This is Betty from Switch and Click and we've got another headset here today. Corsair sent these over at my request because I thought the camo was pretty cool looking. I'm sure no one else here agrees with me on that point, but they are about $130 and they have this feature where when you hear bass in music, especially the low rumbling bass, the headset sort of vibrates and there's different levels of that vibration depending on the setting that you put it at and it's called haptic. All I know is it's like when you see a truck driving by with the music really, really, really loud and the bass is going like it's, it's rumbling. And that's what it sounds like when you put this headset on your head. Anyways, that's a quick overview. We're gonna jump into what's in the box. All right, so in the box, you're gonna have your HS60 haptic manual. It tells you what parts are there, what you can do with the software and things like that. And that's pretty much it. Not too much in this manual. You also get your warranty guide and your safety information, all things that I don't really look at. So we'll just put that on the side. You also get the headset and you get a microphone as well that's separate and a windscreen on your microphone that's removable as well. But I like to put that on there. So it is a detachable microphone and I totally dig that. It's very flexible, very bendy without hurting it at all. And to be honest, I've been using this quite a bit for the past, I guess, four to five-ish days playing a, a lot of Call of Duty uh, Cold War, which is what we're doing right now, just in our chill time. And I've been using a lot of different headsets with it as well, just to compare and be like, oh, this is good, mm, this is all right. Uh, just to get a good feel of what a headset should sound like or what I sort of want in a headset while gaming. So before I didn't do too much gaming, but now I'm doing about, you know, two hours a day-ish just in my downtime. Trust me, I'm, I'm not that good and I'm trying to improve, but it's mostly just chill time. So not a super competitive gamer. That's what's in the box. Time for build quality and design. All right, so the headset itself looks unique for sure. It's got this camo pattern on each ear cup and Corsair did say that this camo pattern is unique to each headset. And so if you buy another one, the camo pattern is gonna look different and unique compared to mine. So each one's sort of one of a kind and I thought that was pretty cool. Yeah, they're mass produced, but they have some sort of personalization factor to them to make them feel like they're yours. So I love the camo here. Not everyone likes it, I do. But I'm not a big fan of the stitching that's on the top of the headband here. The headband is black, but the stitching is white. Some would say that the contrast there is a little bit cool, but I personally don't like the way that that looks out and stands out while it's on my head. So it is a little bit, just a little bit silly looking there. So overall, it's a really big headset. And as far as comfort goes, we'll go into this more in depth later. But the fit is not the best for me personally. If I bend over, there's a little bit of sliding that happens as well as to the side and back. But if I'm just standing still, it's okay. I'm on the smallest adjustment already and there's some gapping behind the ears. On the left ear cup or the headband, you have the uh, backslash backslash 60 haptic like you see on the keyboard. So that looks pretty cool. And then you have the Corsair branding at the top very cleanly. And of course the ear cups look as if they're open back, but they're very closed back indeed. I wish they would just do an open back headset. I just wanna see them try that and see what that sounds like. It's got the Corsair logo in black and is glossy and it'll stand out in the lighting. And of course the ear cushions are pretty thick, pretty deep. 
They are black with white stitching. As for the build, you've got some metal connectors here at each ear cup, but you also have the metal adjustment slider here, and there's not a lot of adjustment. It's pretty limited compared to other headsets that I've seen. There are about eight levels and they are marked, although the markings are really low, low contrast. There's not a lot of pivot, as you can see there. And then it can stretch, but if you stretch it too far, there's a resistance there and I don't wanna go too far past that. Same thing with the other way, not a ton of flex and twist there. And you do have a non-detachable uh, cable here, which goes on the left ear cup. And it ends at a USB port with the Corsair logo on it. Looks pretty normal. You do have controls on each ear cup. The left one is for volume and mute, and the right one is for the haptic adjustment. All right, so as far as comfort goes, this is very personal to me. Played several sessions of Call of Duty with this headset on. And at first I was like, you know, it's super comfortable. It's fine. The, the cushion is nice. Even with glasses on, like the ear cups, the ear cushions will just conform around the glasses and there's no pressing or anything happening. But after about 30 to 40 minutes, I start getting a hot spot here at the top of my head while gaming. And that's probably because there's not a lot of clamp at all in these ear cups. I would say for me, there's definitely not enough clamp because it just slides around if I'm moving around. But for someone whose head is just a little bit wider, I would say the clamping force is near perfect. It's not a lot of pressure and the cushion on the top as well as, well as the ear cups do distribute to everything pretty nicely. As far as heat goes within the ears, it's pretty comfortable. There's a lot of room within each ear cup. I did measure them. I forgot the numbers, but uh, if you look at the B-roll right now, you can see the, the length and the height and the width and everything. So plenty of room for your ears there. And my ears don't feel super close to the drivers either when I put them on, but they do feel like a closed back headphone. So the sound stage isn't super wide or anything, but it's not uncomfortably close either. I can play with this headset on for a pretty long time. As long as in between rounds, I take them off and just let my head rest a little bit and then put it back on. As far as things like doing four to five hour Twitch streams, I'm not sure how the comfort would fare in that situation exactly. All right, so let's move on to sound quality. As I said before, on the right side of the ear cup, there is an adjustment for the haptics. If it's on, there's an LED back there that will blink on and you can adjust that to 100% if you scroll up all the way or completely off if you scroll down all the way. I like to keep it at about 10 to 25%. So at 100%, what it feels like if you're listening to like Drake or something is a low rumble is pretty much a vibration of your head. So I'm not a big fan of it. As far as in gaming goes, it's more of a distraction than it is an addition to uh, performance. As far as footsteps and grenades and gunshots and everything, it's pretty accurate. I can hear people, I mean, in the most recent Call of Duty, you can pretty much hear everything. Everybody walks and runs so loud. It's almost crazy uh, compared to a lot of the older games where that wasn't as prominent. So I can see the haptic being pretty good for watching movies, especially like action movies where there's cars crashing or action happening or explosions like maybe transformers or something here and there but it's definitely more distracting in gaming for music at a low setting it's not too bad if you're one of those people who like your bass to be really earthy then maybe it's a good addition but for me personally i like a more cleaner bass a more punchy bass and less rumble so there's some sound leak for me personally especially with the gapping behind the ears, but it's definitely not as much sound like as an open back headphone would do. The headphones are tuned to be pretty bass heavy, even at a flat EQ setting, the bass still packs a lot of oomph and it's just not like the super cleanest bass, but it's not really muddy either, like in uh, some of the lower end headphones that we've tried. So the microphone, 
It's detachable, it's bendy, it connects to the left side of the headset where the plug is at. And it does have a removable windscreen and it has some noise canceling effects as well. So if I'm using it and I'm typing on my keyboard, you're not going to be able to hear the keyboard sound very very extreme but you are going to be able to hear your voice pretty well if you put the microphone right in front of your mouth you're going to be hearing a lot of those breathing noises and those those that that leaves your mouth but if you leave it more to the side at like a 30 degree ish angle then it's gonna not catch any of those and sound a lot more clean so i will do a microphone test about right now so you can see exactly what that sounds like okay this is what the corsair hs60 haptic sounds like with the microphone at about 30 degrees away from my face so pretty average and according to iq the volume is about 75 so this is what it sounds like at a hundred this is what it sounds like at 50 this is 25 percent guessing 75 is about the perfect place so now i'm just talking so i'm it's pretty clean pretty crisp but the microphone quality is pretty impressive and i've got no complaints about it at all especially if you're using it correctly it's really nice that if i'm typing away on my keyboard it's not going to be super loud so perfect for talking to people on discord one downside i have with detachable microphones like this is that i tend to lose them over time i know i've already lost one of my hyper x microphones but i have another one so i guess that's a that's a bonus but it would have been cool if you could just like flick it up or like you know make it longer or pull it back in things like that it's just this is a little bit easy to lose all right, so we're gonna talk about software next, and this uses the IQ software. When you open it up, there's not a ton of options. It is going to recognize your headset right away, and you just click on that. And there's equalizer settings on the left that you can scroll through. There's some preset effects you can add and make in your own effects, as well as uh, increasing the microphone volume and decreasing the microphone volume. You can also change the side tone volume, and side tone is like, if you're on the microphone and you're talking, the higher the side tone, the more easily you get to hear your own talking uh, back into your headset. If that's off, then you're not going to really hear that at all. I prefer it very low, so I sort of just know what I'm saying, but not too much because it gets a little distracting. What I would like to see is uh, a haptic kind of setting inside the software as well, just so I could like mess around with how strong it is or uh, what bass frequency would I like to see it happening in different ways that I can modify that system. For all the settings, the software is going to have to stay open. There is no memory in the headset, so if you want equalizer settings, you're going to have to open up your IQ software and just leave that on while you're playing, watching a movie, listening to music, any of that. It's pretty bulky software, so that's one of the downsides. Uh, without the software, it's okay. Like It's, it's tuned to be pretty bass heavy but it's for gaming it's not too bad all right so what's the verdict on the corsair hs60 haptics design wise i like it a lot i know is some people are going to say it looks a little bit silly the only part i don't like is this stitching at the top here i would prefer that to be black but that's all personal preference as far as sound quality goes for multi-purpose listening i would say it's pretty good compared to other headsets such as the Rocat headsets that just came out or the Red Dragon headset that we tested a while back. So it's pretty decent. We do have the frequency response graphs on our website at switchandclick.com if you wanna check that out. The haptics are pretty distracting in game and I don't use it at all for gaming. However, I turn it up just very slightly for music or watching action videos and things like that, but definitely not for gaming. Since I don't use the haptics at all, I would recommend that you go and look at the HS70 in the Corsair lineup. That version also has Bluetooth and it can also connect to a variety of different platforms such as PS4, Xbox, Switch, phone, PC, everything, and have actual like different connectivities instead of just a USB port. And it's like $100, so it's $30 cheaper than this. And you know, I don't use a haptic anyway, so I probably wouldn't pay for it, not the extra feature, but the headset itself is pretty comfy. 
The downside of going for the HS70 is that you lose a cool camo look, but it's it's a it's a really sleek black look instead. And as far as Call of Duty goes, right now my favorite headsets for playing has been the the Drop X Sennheiser PC37X or the Bayer Dynamic DT990 Pro. So open back, really wide sound stage, lets me listen to footsteps really well, although I'm not good enough to determine where they're coming from yet, which is a downer, but I know I can hear it. I just start panicking a little bit. Thanks for watching, I really appreciate it. Links are down below if you wanna check out the cool camo look, and they're also down below for some of the headsets that I mentioned that I really like as well. So really appreciate you for watching, and I'll see you in the next time. Mm -hmm.